Hello, I'm Robin Mitchell, and this is Mega.io in 2019. In this episode, we're gonna be looking at the H-Bridge. Now, the circuit you see here is constructed with discrete transistors and other discrete parts, such as resistors, diodes, and switches. And this is a simple example of how they work, but I will make a quick note that this is not how you should build one, mainly because there are many driver ICs that we'll look at in a minute. So, let's see how it works. So if we get the schematic up on the screen, you can see a bunch of diodes, a bunch of transistors, and other components. Now, the H-Bridge consists of four main transistors, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Q1 and Q3 are PMP transistors, while Q2 and Q4 are NPN transistors. Now, both of these transistor pairs are configured as push-pull amplifiers. When the input to any one of these stages is a one, or a high voltage, the PMP will turn off and the NPM will turn on. And if there's no input, then the NPM will turn off and the PMP will turn on. Now the configuration you see here means that if any of the switches are the same value, one or zero, then the motor will not turn on because either both the PMPs will be on or both the NPNs will be on. The only way this motor can turn on is if one of the push-pull amplifier is in the opposite state to the other one. So, in order for the motor to actually turn, either S1 needs to be on or S2 needs to be on, not both at the same time, and neither can be off at the same time. If S1 is on and S2 is off, then current will flow through Q3, through the motor, and then through Q2. If S1 is off and S2 is on, then current will flow through Q1, then through Q4 via the motor. So here we have the test circuit. We've got our H-bridge circuit with our two switches and we've got our motor. Now the motor I've used in this circuit is a solar motor because these require a very small amount of current to actually start working. So I don't overheat the transistors in this example. Normally you should use bigger transistors, but this is just a quick sort of example. So I've got the voltage to the circuit set at 1.6 volts. And the reason why is because I want to keep the heat dissipation as low as possible. So all we have to do now is either press one or the other and the motor will change different directions. And then pressing the other switch, and make the motor go the other way. So while this is a great example of a H-bridge circuit, it's not a great example of a practical application. Now, the reason for this is that these TO92 parts aren't able to dissipate heat and it's a rather bulky circuit. In reality, you would use a dedicated IC such as the BD622XXX series, and we'll look at that in a later date. But these ICs can consume a lot more power without dissipating so much heat. So you can make a smaller package that's more energy efficient, that can control motors without much difficulty. So that's all we have time for for this simple how-to video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.